So GSP stands for what? No. Java is okay, but servlet no. Java server pages. Yes. So GSP stands for Java server pages. Second question, why we use GSP technology? So GSP stands for what? No. Java is okay, but servlet no. Java server pages. Yes. So GSP stands for Java server pages. Second question, why we use GSP technology? So why we use GSP technology? Yes, good. So we use GSP technology to separate programming and presentation. So if we want to separate programming and presentation, we will use the GSP technology. No, Ahmed, not to present XML and HTML. So GSP is a server-side programming and uh, uh, like uh, PHP, like uh, servlet, like any other server-side programming, GSP can uh, uh, output HTML code, can output XML code, can output any anything. So uh, we will use GSP technology just to separate programming and presentation. That means. Uh, uh, there, there are some programmers who uh, create uh, create advanced functions, and other programmers who uh, who create the display of uh, the the design of the web page, the and the display of the web page. After that. They just use the advanced functions or advanced classes using GSP technology. Okay, so uh, I uh, so for this chapter uh, we will concent concentrate on overview of GSP compounds. GSP and servlet without coding, web application. Uh, so coding for this chapter just for GSP expression language. Uh, after that, Java Beans and MVC, just the concept, not the coding. It's clear for you. Any questions? Yes, but uh, the uh, the advantage of GSP uh, using GSP we can um, interact with some classes, Java classes, not servlet, Java classes, uh, and these uh, classes are Java Beans. So we will see what's the meaning of. Uh, Java Beans and how we can uh, use Java Bean uh, with GSP. Okay, good. So 
uh, third question, if we want to execute our uh, a GSP file, we, we send a request, an HTTP request from the browser to the, uh, to the server, to Apache Tomcat. After that, Apache Tomcat execute directly this GSP file. Yes or no? No. Why? Yes, good. Yes. So keep in the mind that GSP documents are not executed directly. So when a GSP document is first visited, <coughs> sorry, Tomcat translates the GSP document to a servlet and after that compiles the servlet. After that, the servlet will be executed. So when we want to execute a GSP, uh, the, the server translates this GSP to servlet before execution. Okay. Uh, this is, is an example of GSP file. So, what are the tag? What's the meaning of GSP scriptlet? So GSP scriptlet is a GSP tag and we can insert in this GSP uh, tag any, uh, any Java code. Yes. So we, we, we can insert in, in this tags any Java code. It's clear for you? So if we compare GSP and servlet, what are the common points and what are the differences between GSP and servlet? No, only servlet uh, is uh, Java classes. GSP is not a Java class, but both contains Java code. It's clear for you, Mr. Abdullah. So the common point is both GSP and servlet contains Java code and both also are yes both also are server-side programs not Java, we talk about servlet and GSP. So servlet and GSP uh, uh, are both server-side programming, both contains uh, Java, uh, uh, Java code. It's clear for you, common points between GSP and servlets. Yes, good. Good, Mr. Walid. So the difference is when we execute a servlet, the servlet could be executed directly, yes, but GSP must be translated to a servlet and after that 
we will execute this servlet. This is, is the first difference. The second difference is when we talk about servlet, servlet is a server side code and is a program with HTML embedded. But GSP is a server side code, but it is a document, not a program, with program embedded. So servlet, in the servlet we find HTML embedded, but in the GSP, the GSP is a document with program embedded. This is, is the second difference between GSP and Servlet. It's clear for you what are the common points between GSP and Servlet and what are the difference, the, the differences between GSP and Servlet. Any question about this point? Okay, so, uh, so in, in this code, what is C, F, C, set, variable, etc.? What represents these tags? What represents these tags? So the prefix C, yes, represents the core GSP standard tag library. So what's the meaning of tag library? That means adding functionality beyond basic GSP. So GSP is This is, is a GSP tag. This one also is a GSP tag, but we're using C is an extension of the tags of GSP. So in, in this example, we find double namespaces. The first one for GSP, basic elements, normal prefix GSP. And the second one is for car GSP standard tag library. Any questions? Good. Uh, can you define me what's the means of web application? Can you give me the definition of web application? So web application represents one file or many files and what is web application? So in the final exam, if uh, uh, we ask you define web application, what is the definition of web application? So web application is a collection of resources that are used together to implement some web-based functionality. So what are their resources? Resources include servlets. So 
well, servlets and GSP also. Uh, we can find HTML documents, style sheets, JavaScript, images, non-servlet Java classes, etc. So keep in mind that a web application is a collection of resources that are used together to implement some web-based functionality. Any questions about web applications? Yes. So we can find, for example, a servlet that uh, uses some predefined classes or we, we create classes. For example, our servlet create some objects uh, like uh, student object. So we can find in web application a Java class that defines the type student. It's clear for you, Mr. Ahmed. So uh, uh, perhaps we we can create uh, our classes. It depends of uh, the type of our application. We can use the built-in uh, uh, objects, and we can create our objects. So within Tomcat, all the files of a simple web application are placed in a, in a directory under web apps. So here, web apps is a folder under our server Tomcat. And in this folder, we, we find all the application, all the web applications. So GSP documents can go in the directory itself, and hidden files such as, such as servlet classes go into web and subdirectory. So web and subdirectory contains servlets, hidden servlets. What's the meaning of hidden servlets? hidden servlets. So to make the difference between a, a normal servlet and uh, a servlet that represents the translation of a GSP file, uh, we talk about hidden files or hidden servlets. Once the web application files are all installed, use Tomcat Manager to deploy the application. So we can set parameters of web application by creating a deployment descriptor. So in Tomcat uh, server, we, we, we have a file, and this is web.xml represents so the web.xml represents the deployment descriptor deployment descriptor so you can find an mcq uh, question about web.xml so web.xml is a deployment descriptor. So what's the meaning of deployment descriptor? So this is, is a s 
Now, uh, f for this one, no. Just for you. This code, just for you. For you, uh, you, you have to keep in the mind that web.xml is a deployment descriptor and it is used to, uh, to provide information about GSP files and servlet files into a web application, okay? Let's move now to JSP expression languages. So an expression uh, uh, embed is a, this is dollar visit plus one. This is, is JSP expression language, is an example of uh, expression language embedded in a GSP document. So, to create this expression, we just use this syntax, dollar, begin, and end. Okay? So, an expression language can occur in template data, evaluates to Java string, as the value of certain GSP attributes, in this case, evaluates to data type that depends on context. So, in GSP expression language, we can find uh, true, false, decimal, integer, floating point, strings, null. Uh, also, when we create a variable name, it's like Java can contain letters, digit, underscore, and dollar must not contain, uh, must not begin with, uh, with a digit and must, must not be reserved. Uh, uh, also in GSP expression language, we can find relational, logical, arithmetic, conditional array access uh, operators, uh, automatic type conversion, implicit objects. So most of these objects are related to, but not the same as, as the GSP implicit objects. In this table, we find some examples of uh, implicit objects like page context, page scope, request scope, session scope, application scope, param, param values, header, header values, cookie, init param. So all these objects are implicit objects or predefined objects. Any question about this object? So all expression language implicit objects except page context implement. Java map interface. So an expression language can access map using array or object notation. So for example, what's the meaning of uh, this instruction? Now just an idea about it. So here for this object, page context, page scope, session scope, param, param values are implicit objects in GSP. So memorize that 
this object are implicit objects in GSP. Okay. Good. For example, uh, in in servlet, if we we write request dot get parameter p one, what's the meaning of this instruction? Yes, we want to bring the value of the the parameter p one. So if we want to create the same instruction in GSP file using GSP expression language, we just write param p1 or param dot p1. It's clear for you. Param dot p one or param p one. So function call in GSP expression language function name followed by parenthesis comma separated list of EL expression arguments. So tag libraries define all functions and function names usually include a namespace prefix associated with the tag library. So we can write fn to lower case after that param username. This is, is an example how we can make a function call. Any questions about function call? Okay. So here we have a request HTTP and just a moment I will connect my tablet. So for example here, Okay, so uh, this is, is an example. So if we have, for example, HTTP exercise dot one uh, exercise one dot GSP, and after that x equal Ahmed. So if we want to uh, bring the value of x, we write in our GSP file. 
param so it is an el an, an el uh, expression we we will write param of uh, ahmed of x sorry param x or param dot x we can write just param dot x okay so param dot x return the value of uh, Ahmed it's clear uh, or we can write param so there are two manners here this is is the first one we write param x or param dot x two manners Uh, this is is uh, how we can use param but here for the function uh, function we will define a function in our example is two lower case the name of the function is two lower case so and this function is defined to lower case and with a string string variable and there are some instruction here after that when we want to uh, to call this function in, uh, with the uh, GSP expression language we just write fn to lower case and here we can write for example fn to lower case of Ahmed this is is a manner or to lower case of uh, param username so param username here is uh, also give us a string the string Ahmed so in our example power pa, param of X not uh, param user name so just is an example here it's clear for you Ahmed so we can for example no no so two upper case or two lower case contains an argument, a string argument. Okay. So two lower case contains a string argument. We can write, for example, string. I will use another color. String. Va value equal uh, param x after that we write fn to lower case of val so in this case we can write val this is is var or we can write param x directly so param x or param value return a string and our function in this example uh, need a string as an argument it's clear now So in GSP markup language, uh, there are three, three types of markup elements: scripting, directive, and action.
scripting, for example, scriptlet, GSP scriptlet. Directive, for example, directive.page to set the content of this page. And action standard provided by GSP itself and custom provided by a tag library. Let's move now to Java Beans classes. Java Beans classes. So, the GSLTL car actions are designed to be used for simple presentation oriented programming tasks performed with a language such as Java. So here we talk about more sophisticated programming tasks. So how we can separate programming and presentation? This is, is the question. So using Java Beans technology, we can allow a GSP document to call Java methods. So Java Beans technology, we will use Java Beans technology to allow a GSP document to call Java methods. And with this manner, we can make separation between programming of sophisticated tasks and presentation. Okay? So this is, is an example of Java Beans classes. So it is a simple Java class. In our case, the name is Test Bean, with an attribute or many attributes and getter and setter method. So requirements, the Java Beans class must be public and not abstract. So what's the meaning of not abstract? So if the Java bean is an abstract class, what is the problem? Yes, good. So if uh, it is not abstract, not abstract, because we, uh, with this manner, we can uh, uh, make instantiation from these classes. We, we can create objects. Because an abstract class, we cannot, we cannot create objects. Uh, sorry, Mr. Abdullah uh, can be inherited from, not inherited from, but can, we can make instances from this, this class. So if we have an abstract class, so we can extend from an abstract class, but we cannot create objects from this class. So to create objects from Java Beans class, Java Beans class must not um, must uh, be public and not abstract. So the the goal is to create instances. So this is is uh, coding is not very important for you. So for Java Beans. Uh, class must have a default constructor to be instantiated by use bean and the class should belong to a package instance of a Java beans class is a bean. So 
when we create a Java Beans class, there are getter and setter, two types of of method, and both require that all the method be public. So, and there are some rules when we create the getter and setter setters of a Java Bean. So we must follow this rules. Okay, uh, after that, let's move now to MVC. So what is the abbreviation of M, V, and C? The abbreviation is Yes, good. Model view controller. So, typical GSP implementation of MVC controller are uh, the controller is represented by Java servlet and model is represented by beans and the view is represented by GSP document. So this is a very important thing. So MVC is an ar architecture that can be used to develop web applications and uh, for GSP, typical GSP implementation of uh, MVC here, the controller is represented by Java servlet, the model by Beans and the DBMS, the view by GSP document. So we can forwarding an HTTP request from a servlet to another compound by a request dispatcher. So request dispatcher is used to make forward of an HTTP request from a servlet to another compound. So coding for MVC now, no coding. So in this chapter we yes yes give a design pattern. So in in this chapter we uh, we investigate GSP technology and we say that GSP technology is uh, uh, is a technology used to separate presentation from programming. Uh, after that, we compare GSP and servlet. What are the common common points? What are the differences between GSP and servlet? Also, we define what the meaning of web application. Uh, we investigate also the GSP expression languages, variables, operators, implicit objects, etc. Function calls. Uh, we we get an idea about Java Beans, and we say that Java Beans is a technology that allows GSP to separate uh, the presentation and the programming. So to to make call to uh, uh, another method from another classes, and we finalize with MVC model V controller and how we can uh, make uh, well, how we can use MVC. Uh, also with PHP we can uh, use MVC. 
and there are some templates uh, that uh, use uh, some PHP code for the model, other uh, other classes, PHP classes for the control, other PHP classes for the presentation. So, for example, if we use uh, some frameworks like uh, PHP Cake or uh, Cake PHP or uh, uh, other frameworks uh, like Zen framework, all these frameworks uh, uh, create web application with model v controller. You are welcome.